So I first wanted to talk about uh, the Joseph Viola saxophone um, study series, uh, three volumes, one part one being uh, scale uh, studies, uh, part two being uh, chord studies, and part three being rhythmic studies. Uh, I think uh, these, these, these were done by um, Joseph Viola back, I think, in 1964. Uh, early 60s uh, for the Berkeley College of Music, as you probably know, is you know considered the the probably the best music school uh, for uh, jazz musicians, uh, arguably. So this uh, series, and you know, I don't need to really sell it because it's really well known and well regarded as the standard for uh, understanding how to play. Uh, all the scales, um, how to understand the chords, uh, the structures, uh, all the, the music concepts on the saxophone. So in other words, if you're a string uh, player or a brass instrumentalist, uh, you'll understand the concepts uh, in the book, of course. Uh, all the chords, you know, it's, it's the same uh, relationship between the notes for any instrument, but it is written out here by Joseph Viola, particular for the saxophone player. And it's, and again, it is, I consider it a standard. Uh, and again, and I don't have to sell it. Uh, I think uh, recently I heard uh, uh, Eric Marienthal, um, you know, the saxophone player, talk about how when he was at this school, you know, this is considered first year uh, basics for, uh, for all saxophone players. So. Uh, I picked it up and I started going through it and now uh, as I'm <clears throat> managing my illness uh, I find that you can't go wrong with uh, practicing this stuff uh, and uh, I'll get into it with uh, volume one the scale studies uh, and uh, let's take a look at it so the first volume uh, is a bunch of scale studies by Joseph Viola in the first, very first part. Uh, by the way, the cover um, that I had, this is like, I think one of the first pressings of the book, so it's very old, but you can pick this up uh, online. Uh, and the new versions are, I think a green, has a green, mostly a green cover. It's not spiral bound, but if you can find a spiral bound version of any uh, printed music uh, or any, uh, um, you know, book of studies uh, that that has a lot of pages. Uh, it's worth getting uh, if you're going to be practicing, and and I strongly recommend practicing on a regular basis, uh, daily if you can. So the very first um, section uh, is a section on major scales, uh, and it's called major scales tonal variations. So what it's doing is you can see starts with C on this page one and it's showing you the numbering system as well. C being one in Roman numeral one, uh, D being Roman numeral two, E being uh, Roman numeral three, F four, and so on. As you see, we're going up the scale from C all the way up and it doesn't stop at <clears throat> the next C, which is one octave up. And it doesn't stop at um, the next octave up, but it keeps going up to this very, very top note here, which is the F. And, and as I mentioned before, this is particular to the saxophone. So the whole purpose of doing this is to extend the reach of your knowledge of the saxophone keyboard while playing the C major scale, going up and down. So you start with, and it's also showing the numbering system. So you're starting with one, go all the way, all the way up to the highest F you can hit on the saxophone with the keys. Um, <clears throat> altissimo is an entirely different matter, 
I'm gonna talk about that in another video. And they go all the way back down, okay? And I have to flip it over because I forgot. Yeah, it goes all the way back down to C, and then it turns around by, well, it go, then it goes down to B, and then back up to C. All right, and then the next line starts on number two of the C major scale, which is D, right? Good, I got that right. So D, it goes, and it goes all the way, all the way up to F again. Okay, so again, this is, the purpose of this is for you to get familiar with the keyboard. And, uh, and while training your ear, you know, understanding the relationship between the notes while you're in the C major scale. So you're doing, and you're doing that again with the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and the seventh degree, okay, of the uh, C major scale, which is a B. And you're starting with the low B, <clears throat> going all the way up to the F, and then going all the way back down to uh, low B, and then I think you're back to C, because you're always ending on C. So the pattern repeats itself <clears throat> in the second page, on the second page with the key of F, <clears throat> okay? And then the key of um, G, yes, key of G, because because they're related and there's a reason why they're in this order because I did a video on uh, I did a video on the circle of fifths uh, and uh, mentioned that if you really look at that from time to time always have it handy while you're practicing uh, you'll discover new things and uh, I don't think I have the time to just list them it's not really as useful as you discovering them on your own uh, it's way more uh, exciting too uh, and satisfying. <clears throat> so yes, we started with C, we have the key of F, and we have the key of G. And when you look at the circle of fifths, you see that they are related because the reason why they're related is because they're not too far from each other. When you look at the circle of fifths, you have F here and G. G has one sharp and F has one flat, where C has nothing. So. As you go down, as you look through the book, you can also look at the chart and see that as you move, you're moving like in these like swaths of threes. Uh, I think that's the best way I can explain it as, as before playing it. So yeah, that that's how I see it. <clears throat> and then it keeps going with then the key of the flat. <clears throat> it has two flats. And it's the same pattern for every key, which is to go to the highest no, the highest note on the saxophone is indeed an F, right? But for this part of the exercise, um, page two of the book or, you know, exercise three, the tonal variation, the key of uh, uh, G major, the F, you'll notice, is sharped, right? Again, looking at the circle of fifths chart here, you know that you can confirm that in the key of G at one sharp. So F would be sharp. So even though you can, you can hit the F sharp on the saxophone if there's a mechanical key for it, like a lot of the modern ones have, or using altissimo fine. But these studies were written, uh, keeping in mind the saxophone at that time could not go higher than an F mechanically, okay? So to make a long story short, the highest note you're gonna hit for the key of G in this exercise as you can see here, is not going to be F, but rather it's E, <clears throat> okay? It's a high E, and that's fine, because it was a sound, uh, yeah, it's, it, and, and uh, but if you can hit the F sharp, go for it, it's great, it's even better. Uh, but I just wanted to explain how it's written out, uh, if any of you have uh, this, if you have, um, have it written out exactly like I have in this version or um, edition of the, uh, uh, of the book. Then this section on uh, major scale tonal variations uh, continues from key of G to key of B flat, D, E flat, A, A flat, E, D flat, okay, uh, B, G flat, F sharp, C flat, C sharp, C, uh, 
making it a full circle, but there you're seeing a combination of the circle of fourths and the circle of fifths. So for the key of C, again, we're starting with the low C on the alto, C major, and we're going all the way to the highest note, F, um, like this. So, ascending and descending, and keeping in mind, we're also learning the numbering system here. Because uh, if you, when you look at your copy of the book, you'll see it, it, it numbers out one through seven all the degrees of the major scale, and then you just take off from, keep keep going from there uh, to play the keyboard of the saxophone. And, and, and it's, for those who are uh, struggling like me, uh, whether you're a beginner or you have muscular issues, uh, this is perfect because you are really uh, exercising your, uh, your hands and the palm keys and how to reach for them uh, in the most uh, natural and effortless way. So the second line of the exercise starts with the second degree uh, and it does the same thing. So it's not much, I love these exercises because you really don't have to memorize too much here uh, as long as you know the major scale. Uh, and in this case, the C major scale. So we're starting with D. starts with the third degree of the scale, the number three uh, note in C major, which is going to be E. Then we go to number four, starting with the F. before the octave, which is a B. And there you did it. You did the whole uh, C major scale tonal variations exercise from Joseph Viola's uh, page one of his uh, scale studies book. And if you could do that, then you should be able to do the second exercise, which starts with F, right? That's your new one, in this case, key of F major. Oh, good to note if there's any sharps or flats. One flat, okay? So you can still reach that highest F on the saxophone as part of the, that uh, scale. So it would sound like... <laughs> rather than a B natural because it's the B flat that sort of is, which you have to remember, is uh, flatted, okay, when you play the F major scale. And you're always being tested on this as you move up the ladder here, or the degrees, with number two, starting with a G. <laughs> gets tricky if you forget the flat and where it's being flatted. So these exercises are great because it's testing your knowledge of circle of fifths, the number system, 
and the scale itself, major scales in this case, and you're gonna do it with the key of G and the B and B flat, and you'll have your circle of fifths chart handy, right? You'll have something like this handy, many versions of it. They can get pretty crazy with detail, uh, and they should over time, but if you wanna start out basic, this is the perfect place to start. Uh, you can't go wrong here, especially when you go through the entire section here, uh, all the keys, and then move on to the next section of the book, which, which I'll cover at some point in the future. But if you find this helpful, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel.